Okay, so um, let's see. Hopefully, this or hopefully what I did over the weekend will make sense to me. Um, yeah, that was not what I wanted to do. Okay, so basically, what we're doing is you know you have to use the I'm doing regression trees here, but I'm using the um, I use the tidy models uh, you know guide for for this book. But instead of doing the Boston data set, I decided to use the car seats. Why pick car seats? Uh, I think it was mentioned in another context and it was one that I thought of. So that was just why. Um, and so, yeah, you load the packages as normal and the R part plot package you'll also need if you were to do some plotting of the VIP package for variable importance. So, okay. So I think a lot of this for people who have tidy models experience is probably, um, um, perhaps old hat, so to speak. Uh, so you set up your specification here for regression. Um, and I apologize ahead of time. My variable naming convention is kind of all over the place. So if it doesn't make sense what I did, it probably doesn't make sense. And just ask me, um, hop on in and ask. So just set, setting the engine right, we're using our part and the mode of course being regression. Um, so then, for cross validation, uh, if you remember from chapter five, it's called V fold, of course, and tidy models. Let's see a chat. Let's see what, anything other than Boston. Oh yes, yeah, I know we talked about that uh, previously, uh, and how there's some uh, questionable variables in there. Okay, so again, you're probably familiar with all this initial training testing, right? Um, and then you can just do the fit. Uh, you could also use a workflow, but I'm not doing the hyperparameter tuning right now. So it's maybe not quite as big of a deal. I'm putting in everything and I'm using that training set. So then just taking a look at what this is, the parsnip model object. Um, that's a lot of code. I don't know about you. That's not super read readable to me um, just because uh, it's just a lot. Um, I am curious, uh, I just noticed this. Anybody know what the star means? That has to do with, does anybody who's more familiar with trees, if anybody could jump in, I'm curious what that means. Does it, does it say, not say at the bottom? Maybe it, I, I, it doesn't. I don't, it doesn't. I would expect that to be something about like importance or something yeah that's what i I, mean, I know like the the model output right it's like yeah it's the p-values so i don't know um what that was about but yeah <laughs> so if anybody thinks about anything jump on <laughs> in um so then just augmenting there with uh there's a couple of different metrics that you just looking at it for the test portion of the data and um i like rmse um our especially R squared, obviously, you know, it's, it can be useful, but I think really, I guess, I guess for me coming from a forecasting context, thinking about that error is really important. Um, so then you can, so I, this is kind of two separate things. I just broke up the code into different blocks, not by any rhyme or reason, just to make it a little bit easier for myself. So I wanted to see, take a look at this whole stuff up here and look at the plot so um and so look, let's take a look there's a couple different outputs from this here so yeah so rmsc um 2.08 so you think about it the one of the downsides of rmsc is it because it's not really like a standardized thing it's based on the it's going to vary based of course on the units of your outcome variable it's like is that good is that not well this range is from about 8 to 15 I mean, that's not horrible, I guess. Maybe I'm just used to, to errors that are pretty high, <laughs> but it's like, okay. So we haven't really done any tuning or anything. We're just doing a, you know, um, kind of the cross validation. So then taking a look at this, scroll up a little bit. This is not, well, this is probably my screen and the fact that I haven't really re um, rendered anything, but it is not super readable just because the, Maybe my eyes are not good enough to see the font, but I didn't 
go through the trouble of trying to figure out how to make it more readable. But you can see if, if you can kind of squint a little bit, there's different places where shelf location equals bad. And then you, you know, branch off the age of the population. Interestingly, it was 61. I'm not sure why 61, because I would think it would be younger people who would be buying car seats, but I, I don't know. Um, you know, obviously the model found that. <laughs> uh, so then we get down to all of this, and these these percentages. If you can kind of squint and see that, they kind of say what percent of the um, data falls under each, you know, node or final node of that tree. So kind of an interesting visualization. Okay, so uh, just one yes. second. That it looked like near the bottom there, there was another age split on sixty-five. Oh. 65 yeah i mean i'm that's, thinking grandparents maybe but i yeah, don't know there, it's just there's a 62 over the, that's huh so the fact that multiple times it came it's up funny. as like important yeah, yeah i guess that's interesting to me because i would think you know you probably have like the late 20s to about early 40s set and then maybe like over 60 so maybe that is where it's saying is like grandparents go out and or you know buy uh yeah. Buy the car seats to the grandkids or something. So yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. I think I did look at the information for this data set when I was looking at the variables. And this is actually a simulated data set, which, oh, oh well, maybe I would have chosen if I'd known that. But um, it's hard to say like what areas of the country they were trying to mimic or the world in terms of like, okay, are there actually places that would, you know, reasonably meet these uh, demographic characteristics. So, oh, well. Um, okay, so now we have work, now I'm doing the workflow with tidy models. Um, Jonathan said in the chat that okay. he found it's the terminal nodes is what the asterisks are. Okay, makes, okay, so that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Thank you, That's that makes sense then. Okay, cool. So um, now we're looking at the workflow portion of it. This is really useful for when you're doing that um, a little bit more tuning. So um, I am very glad that uh, we have this in the guide because I would not have really known about the cost complexity um, tuning parameter. Maybe maybe I missed something, but this is kind of helpful to understand. So I have that um, specification we mentioned earlier for the you know regression tree. You setting up a workflow object here. And then I'm setting the arguments here. And this cost complexity will be something I will tune. So it's basically like saying, how, how much do we want to penalize this tree for being complex? And then you could do, I think you do add a recipe here. Um, and that can be useful if you use the recipe for like pre-processing steps. Given that I wasn't doing that, I just did the add formula. Um, but I think that's something that you could certainly do. So then again, we could do the V fold. Um, and then the cost complexity, I just used the guide um, that was based on the tidy models guide. The reason being, I didn't have a, a good intuition of what would be a reasonable level for this. And I thought, well, you know, I'll stick with that. It's more of a learning exercise for us at this point. I'm not interested in predicting car seat sales outside, outside of this book club. So then we're doing the grid tuning here as opposed to, I think there's iter iterative search, which I am not familiar with yet. Hopefully will be by the time I make it through the tidy models book with the uh, cohort four. So then uh, the tune grid, I guess we got the workflow object, resamples that fold that we denoted previously, and then the parameter grid. So we basically have, um, let me push this here, parameter grid. So we have this range and then 10 different levels. So we'll have like 10 different um, values going from negative four to negative one. And let's see, I'm gonna auto pot. Yeah, I don't wanna run it because it takes a while to do. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna... Okay, that is not working for me for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know why that's not working for me. Um, let me, okay, um, I'm not sure. Anybody, normally just when you hit control enter, should, let's try it, no, it's, 
Okay, there okay, we go. Man. Yeah, okay. there we go. Second time it worked. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why. I think I pressed the same thing two times. But um, so now we have a nice little handy plot. I'm sure you could customize this if you were, you know, wanting to see various things. You have RMSC, right? And you see the varying levels. Um, it's chosen varying levels of the cost complexity. And then you have R squared on the bottom. And you can see that after a certain point, R squared really kind of takes a, a hit as we go up. So that's kind of what we're doing when we're tuning is we're kind of looking to um, optimize these. Okay, so then best complexity, there's a handy select best function. You may be familiar with the tidy models. And I picked the ACE on RMSE, again, like RMSE. Um, and then you finalize the workflow um, based on what you've chosen to be the best complexity after that tuning, um, and again, using the car seats train, you can plot this again, it'll be a little bit different. Let's see here. Yeah, I get this warning message. Yeah, so I should probably silence warnings there, but I, um, I mean, I don't really feel like it's a whole lot less complex. <laughs> to be honest, I haven't compared it uh, with the previous model but perhaps a little more complex model. It, it might be a little bit more. Um, like I said, I haven't got, done a lot of in-depth analysis with that. So, but you know, at least we could say we've done a little, some tuning there. And then you can, um, then I was just curious to say, okay, so now I'm gonna take some new data, what I did not use, right? In that default cross-validation and with my new, you know, final model, what am I going to, and I mean, it's not really that much better. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not, I mean, that's really close to the same, right? It is really close, but perhaps it's saying that everything is very, there's a lot, a lot of these variables yes. are really important. If I made a mistake here in any of this, I mean, in my process, I would love to hear someone jump in or like, yeah, you shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have done this. I thought, but um, yeah, so maybe that's, maybe the, maybe the thing is that, uh, I, I did something wrong, or maybe the moral of the story is sometimes even when you do some parameter, some, you know, tuning, it's not going to make that much of a difference. <laughs> so I am curious, like, I don't know, without really, really, really diving in, this is a simulated data set. Yeah. And the fact that you're getting almost the same, like, I wonder if you are nearing what it's possible to get out of this data set. Something. Possibly. Yeah. I mean, perhaps I should have chosen a different data set. I just was like, oh, the car seats one, that works because they were talking about that in the book, right? And I'm thinking, eh, I don't want to do the same data set. And obviously, you know, I know a lot of us try, try to avoid the Boston one when we can. So uh, perhaps it would be a more interesting <laughs> exercise to go back and do this on a non like kind of weird data set. Um, so yeah, let's see. Somebody commented. I'll see. Oh, Federica's okay. jumping off. Okay, cool. So yes, yeah, so that was me doing regression trees. Um, and yeah, it was interesting. I, I need to think about how I want to apply this to my own work, which is time series forecasting um, without a lot of good predictor variables. But, you know, I'm sure it, it, it would be an, I'm glad I went through this because I guess I have now of a, a good framework um, to go go through. But yeah, the tidy models, is it's um, interesting workflow. I, I could definitely see the benefit when you are doing um, tuning for sure. Okay, so random forest and bagging. So bagging is basically, I think, where you do all of the variables considered at each like split, so to speak, or all the columns as opposed to a, a subset of the columns. That engine is random forest. Um, this basically says, hey, I wanna be able to look at the variable importance um, trait and then of course regression. So you probably this is kind of a familiar workflow, I'm sure, to you all by now. Um, let's see here. I think I was doing this. So yeah. And this was this is kind of interesting to me. So again, one point. So quite a. I mean, I'd say significantly better. Yeah. Obviously, ha than the other one, which is which kind of goes along with what we were saying, all the variables are kind of important, right? Because bagging would, would be more 
of is that, that's kind of the, how bagging works, so to speak. Um, so yeah, uh, what this is kind of interest. He now email. I'm, I'm pronouncing his name correctly. Who came up with the tidy models guide? It's interesting to kind of look at your predictions versus the you know the perfect fit line, so to speak, right? This is just some simple code that you can do. Um, it's a good idea, I guess, to check and make sure nothing looks crazy. Definitely seeing some issues, especially the tails. Um, you know, this would be, of course, a perfect line prediction being on the y axis. But I mean, eh, it's okay, I guess. <laughs> How's that for a resounding endorsement of the model? So, if anybody has any thoughts about that, I'd be curious to let me see if I can pull this down so y'all can see it a little bit better. I'd be curious to hear them, but whoops. Uh, so yeah, I mean, okay. Yep. Uh, <laughs> I think the Boston data set looked a lot, I think he was using the Boston for this point, looked a lot nicer, but you know, again, you do what you, you get what you get. So, okay, so now looking at random forest, um, Again, this one, we're just saying this is the number of, I guess, predictors to be considered at each node, if I remember correctly. Anyone jump in if I've stated that incorrectly. So again, we're going through, right now, I'm not doing any kind of uh, tuning here. It's the same thing. So let's see. Oh, gosh. Like, yeah. So it's a little bit worse. Um, maybe that's not really that big of a deal. Now let's take a look at that little plot there. Yeah, I mean, definitely there's, you know, again, at these tail, there seems to be, so when sales are lower, there's a higher predicted value and then kind of vice versa on um, the high side sales. Okay, hyperparameter tuning. Um, so this was, I found, and I should probably put this in the chat, in the Slack channel. Julia Silgi has a really informative, she did it with classification, but it's very applicable, of course, for regression, just changing a few things for random forests on her blog. Um, so I didn't tune trees, maybe I should, but, um, you could do the number of predictors considered and then the minimum observations that need to be at each split. So that's min n. Um, so set mode, again, this is looking familiar by now. Um, adding the model, adding the formula, right? I could have done a recipe again, but I'm not really doing any kind of transformations. It's all uh, you know, numerical variables. Well, no, it isn't, I guess. But uh, so then with tuning grid. Um, we've got that tune workflow. Again, I did 20. This takes a long time to run, at least for me. Just a heads up if you're going through this exercise by yourself. So I definitely don't want to do that right now. Um, <laughs> so then uh, what's kind of the, the ggplot so that she showed was really interesting to me. Um, ggplot2 is, I don't, is not my strong suit with R. So it was kind of good to understand um, more of that, and obviously pivot longer just to reshape the data. So I looked at RMSE again. So I'm selecting like the mean, and then the, these are the different kinds of parameters. Because again, the tuning grid creates different values that are paired. Um, let me see if, let me look at that. I'm gonna do something real quick here, just so. Okay, that wasn't what I wanted to do. Was I think it? you want uh, yeah, sorry. everything <laughs> through the select of the your call. So if you yeah, go to your plot call. See. I'm trying to look where was I? Tune res RF. Yeah. The um everything before pivot longer, probably. If you just select that. Yeah, yeah, letter. that's a good point. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, you know, I was doing this on Saturday. <laughs> yeah. And then I forgot about it. Oh well. Okay. So, oh, yeah, and yeah, here we go. So, you can kind of see what's going on here, right? We have different, and I chose a not a huge grid to be honest, but you know, again, this is kind of a toy example. 
so many different values of you know these different hyperparameters that we're tuning and then we're going to kind of look at that and plot that and say okay um this will and then julia has this interest you can go back and then you can narrow and then tune again so that's what we're gonna do so mm. it's not as complicated as it sounds i can assure you <laughs> i was very thankful for the tutorial so if you go as is often the case um so in in her tutorial it looks really it's a really nice little linear kind of thing and this of course is not <laughs> So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, this is based on RMSE, right? And the different, so I have here M3 and then min N, and, and you can kind of see as min N goes up as a general pattern, RMSE gets worse, right? And it's a general opposite pattern. So really we're seeing the best RMSE on these combinations of these hyperparameters that are, you know, more and higher M3 and little bit to the, on the lower side for um, min n. So I took, it's it's always nice to have a visual, you can kind of see what's going on. And in this kind of case where I'm not doing like a very big grid, it works pretty well. So that's, so then I go back and I say, okay, that was cool. So I want to narrow this down a little bit. And so I said, okay, min n looks from about 10 to about 25. It's where I, I had the lower RMSE. And for M3, anything from about four onward up to about 10, which is all the variables in, the, all the, the predictor variables. And I just, the levels equals 10, I think, or I might, I might have changed that, but um, I was playing around with it. You can change the levels depending on how big you want this grid to be. So this will hope, hopefully help me kind of narrow down a little bit. Um, again, I'm going through the same process again, collecting the metrics. Uh, and then this is kind of a cool plot uh, I it, that uh, was in Julia Silji's blog. Uh, and I really enjoyed kind of seeing this because it's a nice little visual and it's very pretty, not to mention. So we always like pretty um, visuals. So looking at, um, we have a min and of course with the different colors here, it's kind of like a upside down rainbow of sorts. Um, and then RMSE here, we see that going down. And then you can kind of see not to, so here we get um, our lowest RMSE for all that tuning. Again, select best, um, finalizing the workflow with that best and fitting the model again on the entire training data set, right? And then um, what I'm doing is gonna, I just wanted to see here, um, augmenting this model. Uh, so let's see that 1.47. So, I mean, honestly, the bagging was a little bit better, <laughs> just a little bit. I mean, it's hard to say it's probably within variation, right? Um, and especially since I'm doing like grid parameter tuning. Um, but this is not surprising to me though, that bagging would be so good, right? Because bagging looks at all the predictors, um, and, and we found that the best model has all right. 10 of those predictors, right? So bagging would have been a very good solution, even no like no tuning. That now that is probably specific to this data set. Um, this little toy simulated data set, which I wish I had known about <laughs> that before I started <laughs> with it. But here we are. So I it's kind of funny because I think using a data set that systematically isn't good mm -hmm. is helpful to like really think about what the things mean you know like oh why is this tuning always coming out to use all the predictors oh, yeah because it's simulated you know and, and yeah so it's they probably way... had some relationship between every single one of the predictors and the outcome yeah right so i, I think it's it's so good i'm glad you used it <laughs> okay well at least we avoided boston and then i just kept yeah. this in here because i thought you know actually you know i was like oh the vip package which also i love the name of that <laughs> um so i said okay i'm gonna look at this well oh. apparently it doesn't work um currently for this type of model so heads up because i wanted to see well which one's most important right Cur kind of curious since the whole lot of the variables are in uh in that best model so to speak and it's not currently available so maybe i didn't I, you know if you don't tune it i did you can use it for um 
other some of the other tree models, but not um, not this one. Uh, so if anybody knows a workaround or perhaps that will be eventually available for this type of model. So, well, that's all I had. Um, any questions, corrections, comments? I don't see if there's anything yeah. in the chat. I don't see anything. No, in the nothing chat. new in the uh, chat. Great, great, great job, uh, uh, Laura. Uh, Laura. Uh, Laura. Uh, can, uh, can you do share your notes somehow? I don't know. Maybe. You want me to post it? I mean, I can. I can send this to anybody who wants to see it. You could see it in all its uh, messy glory. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, I'm happy to share it. It's. I think a, a lot of. I'll, I'm going to post. I think what might even be more helpful. I'll. I can share, send this to you, Federica, if you like. But. Um, I'll put, so put a link to that uh, post from Julia Silde's blog, because I thought that was really helpful um, in kind of doing some of this hyperparameter tuning for the random forest model. Okay. So. Okay. Thank you, Laura. Sure. I'll stop sharing, and if anybody wants to see it. Oh, I see a chat here. OK. Federica is dropping off. OK. OK, I'll stop sharing, and anybody wants to share, I'd love to see other what other people have to <laughs> Offer for that. I have nothing. Um, Jonathan, were you able to put anything together? I did not. I am sorry. Uh, and, uh, no uh, apologies Pamela. needed. I, I guess maybe if I go around, I, I need to do more classification stuff because right. I just don't have the incentive right now. It's like someday there's going to be a giant <laughs> classification problem. And I'm going to be like, oh man, I should have been doing all those parts of the labs too. <laughs> so. Yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's that's true of like all everything in this that I should have done this lab, but I did not. Um, but yeah, uh, it's I I really like to see um, the applications of tidy models and kind of seeing how it's useful. I this feels like a, a good one. I don't, and maybe he does later in the lab. Um, it'd be a good place to use workflow sets actually to compare okay. the different trees because workflow sets is where you can do lots of models like together okay and you start with the same setup um i don't know i don't know how how useful that would be but just this sounds be, really interesting yeah I'm, I'm a total beginner to tidy models like <laughs> i said i i, I haven't uh I'm part of the way through the one of the cohorts but um yeah i I think there's so much that you can do with that and i feel like i'm just scratching the surface um so i don't know yeah if anybody has an example of using the workflow sets please please do share this all right well so chapter think... nine next week uh yes and um i will i can present something on that okay um i support vector machines so i'll see how far I, I have not read the chapter so i don't know if it's a really long one or if it's a really short one <laughs> um but you know i'll work on that and see okay. have something ready to present at least yeah support vector machines is an area that um i'm looking forward to reading this chapter i'll put it that way <laughs> i don't so. know i have never i don't know really much about that so it's going to be a new I, new material for me which is a good thing i um have seen them mentioned many times and i'm sure at some point i have built one but i've never really used them so um yeah <laughs> well fun times yes all right see everyone next week hopefully slack will behave better sounds good <laughs> all right bye thanks bye-bye